Internally, as I have already mentioned, the Socom Gear Novesk N4 is upgradable with aftermarket parts. However, externally, you're rather limited for options. The barrel is proprietary, and there are no replacement parts on the market. However, the grip and stock can be replaced with real steel parts, and there are a couple of front sets available. Unfortunately, as the gearbox is newly designed, it means that there aren't that many upgrade parts on the market at the moment. There is, however, a full RIS handguard front set thingamajig for mounting lots of accessories. Like the rest of the WAM4 series, the Patriot pistol can be fitted with real steel furniture. Internally, there's a huge array of aftermarket parts available for upgrades. Similarly, there's a huge array of externals available. Internal upgrades include airsoft surgeons, super lightweight bolt carrier. And to prove which gun is worth its metal, we've been set a number of challenges. Starting off with... Pimp your gun. We each have to pimp each other's guns. And we have to pick the names by random from a hat. Okay, so I've got Sockham gear. Oh, yeah. So that means Sockham gear guy is doing the Western Arms guy. And the Western Arms guy is doing me, so to speak. Standard M4 salt mod by Marie here. On top is a Hurricane 552 hollow sight, the Magpul PTS MOE handguard, and a Madpool AGX screening launcher. That looks sweet. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And here I present to you the WA M4. It's got an airsoft surgeon pistol sized reflex sight. In a Veske KX3 from Mad Bull. And since this is a pistol and used for CQB, I have given him a last ditch defensive measure. For your gun, I want to combine two things. One is passion, and one is concerns. My passion is music, so I've combined that along with one of my concerns, which is grippage. You can never have enough grippage. So, here we are. Oh my god, what have you done to it? Um, well, I thought these Milspec QB foregrips are quite handy, so I thought I'd give you three of them. And I've filled them with BBs. So when the blowback, when the blowback jolts your gun, you'll create sweet, sweet music, just like a set of maracas. Also, I've got a little cleaning pad here, so you can clean your muzzle and your front sides. So as you can see, the Tokyo Mori Sotmod is highly customizable, with a plethora of RIS rails to attach accessories to. The Silicon Gear Novesky N4 is not as customizable as the Sotmod, as there is only one rail to attach things on. However, it does have the ability to swap out the grip and the stock. At first, the Patriot pistol may seem the least customizable because of the preset kit. However, the Western Arms M4 series has the widest range of aftermarket kits available. So, the next challenge is who can shoot off a toilet roll at 20 meters with the least amount of shots. Due to preliminary tests showing we couldn't hit the target at 20 meters, we shortened it to 10 meters. And the Tokyo Mori Sotmod goes first. So there we go, down in 8 shots. Not bad considering the sight not been zeroed. 
And now I'll be using the WA Patriot to shoot at the target. Six shots with an unzeroed sight. And now the Falcon gear is turned with excellent sights. Nope, I didn't hit it. So the WA got it in six shots. Let me try to see if I can beat it. I think it calls for a little bit of AGX action. And I still missed it. So, as you can see, putting three phallic objects on the top of your M4 doesn't make it very accurate for shooting. And as you can see, WA M4 Patriot, even though with a very small unzeroed sight, was the most accurate out of all three of us. Although the Hurricane 552 hollow sight has been installed on the Murray SOT mod, it still could not compare with the accuracy of the Patriot pistol. And next up is the Jenga blowback challenge to find which gun has the strongest blowback. First up to the challenge was the Tokyo Marui SOT mod. So there we have it, the Tokyo Roy SOP mod knocked over the Jenga set, but it did take its time. And next up is the blistering Sockham Gear M4. The Sockham Gear's recoil was stronger than the Tokyo Marui's, knocking down the tower in a shorter time. And lastly, we tested the WA Patriot pistol. In conclusion, the WA Patriot pistol knocked down the Jenga tower at relatively the same time as the Sokom Gear and Fort Nebeske. The conclusion to our scientific test is that if you want to knock over a Jenga set in the quickest time possible, your best bet is a GBB rifle. As our final challenge to find out the power of these guns, we're going to use the poor man's chrono with a coke can. The first gun to be chronoed was the WA M4 Patriot. The M4 Patriot failed to penetrate one side of a can, cracking one side and not even going in. The, this puts the WA M4 Patriot at below 290 FPS. Next, the Tokyo Mori M4 Soft Mod was coming. Yeah, I'm more of a Pepsi fan myself. The Tokyo Mori Soft Mod penetrated one side and dented the other. This puts the Tokumari sub mod between 310 and 350. Lastly, the Silcom Gear N4 Noveske was chrono. Since it penetrated both sides, we then tested it at the center of the bottom. We then tested it at the edge of the bottom. And then at the top. Nope. The Silcom Gear Noveske N4 penetrated every surface except the top, putting it at above 460 FPS. In conclusion, if you're looking for a gun with good recoil, then GVB is the way to go. The Silicon Gear Noveske Rifle Works is slightly cheaper than the WA Patriot pistol. However, it doesn't have as much upgradability options, but is much more powerful right out of the box. And even though the AEG only has modest recoil and power, it benefits from being the most reliable and most skirmishable in cold weather. The WA Patriot pistol is the most expensive and starts off as one of the weakest, However, it has the most upgradability options and has the strongest recoil of all of them. To simplify this, AG equals effective and GVB equals fun.